Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is also sponsored by the Norton Sound Economic Development Corporation, serving the fisheries of the Bering Strait region. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. This program is also brought to you by ASRC Energy Services, a subsidiary of Arctic Slope Regional Corporation. One, two, three, four, let's go. It's Heartbeat. It's a fabulous show. Alaska. Hi, Heartbeat Alaska. It's Heartbeat. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for genius show. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. Welcome one, welcome all. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Information. I'm Jeannie Green. You're going to love today's program. We travel to an Athabascan village to Nikolai, Alaska, where Part of wellness means having fun. I'll be back with Nikolai right after this. Flying in Alaska? Fly Frontier, the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier is expanding again. They've added new routes to Nome, Kotzebue, and the surrounding villages. As you can see, Frontier is now really covering Alaska. So the next time you fly, try Frontier. Frontier offers quick, convenient check-in, low fares, and service direct to many of the villages. Frontier Flying Service is the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Make it your official airline, too. Life doesn't rewind. <laughs> so if your child is drinking and smoking pot, stop them while you still can. Jessica, we need to talk. There's help. Hi, Kuyana for flying Bering Air. Bering Air flies throughout Northwest Alaska and has hubs in Nome and Kotzebue. Bering Air flies both helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft, such as our Cessna Caravans, Piper Navajos, Beach King Airs, and our large cargo aircraft, the Casa. Bering Air offers daily scheduled flights and charters throughout Alaska and the Soviet Far East. Bering Air also provides emergency medical flights for Northwest Alaska. For safe and reliable service, fly with Bering Air. It's the Hootenannish, that's what some call it, others, the Nikolai Winter Carnival. It's an annual event, now dedicated to the wellness of the local people. And the young ones are loving every minute of it. It was a good race, I kept on falling over, hurt my arm, but it was good. I just saw in the sport of fun. Nikolai is a village of about 130 people located in the interior of Alaska on the south fork of the Kuskokwim River. As the crow flies, it's about 46 miles east of McGrath. Nikolai has been relocated at least three times since the 1880s. The present site was established in 1918 and was the site of a trading post and a roadhouse during the gold rush. In 1927, the St. Nicholas Orthodox Church was constructed, and by 1948, a private school was established. In 1949, the post office opened. The airport, built in 1963, brought the outside world to the community. Nikolai was incorporated in 1970. This started up uh, 
up the South Park someplace. First time they started way up there uh, around Farewell area, around, around uh, right across from Moss, the uh, Big Dillinger. And then this, some way they moved down to up here in uh, Little Tonzuna. And they made a little village right there too, but flood, I guess, in summer, and they moved down, further down, right up here at Three Mile Up River. They also flood got in that one, the three feet inside the church, they said. So they relocate this one in 1920, 1920 maybe. And uh, the uh, the uh, tear that old church down, they brought it down here. And Finally, the church leaders found the perfect stable piece of dry ground to rebuild the church. They planted trees around the new church, and the present-day village of Nikolai was born. Those same trees now tower over the church. It's not surprising they had problems finding a village site that wouldn't flood. This part of the interior is very flat, striped with rivers and tributaries. These rivers are wild and meandering, forever reinventing themselves. Before contact with the Western world, the Athabascans here had very few permanent camps. They moved with the shifting rivers and the subsistence foods the rivers carried to their doorstep. This is Tom Robert. He's traveling out to check beaver traps he set under the ice. He took my bait, and it's, it's below maybe about 10 feet, more of about 12 feet long. So he chewed off the end. So that means I gotta find another thick farm. Well, I gotta go get some bait you now. He uses a piece of fresh cut willow as bait. He places it under the ice near a beaver house, then puts the snares around it. Beaver snare. Well, you just basically put it on a nice sturdy, strong willow. And usually about just making a loose farm. And just set it in like, like right about there. Because I already got one set this way. And one set one this way. In case it comes in either way. Me and my father-in-law set these about a month ago. This is the only one we've ever caught anything out of. He's been taking our bait a lot lately. Today he hasn't bought it. And basically, he just goes right in there and he gets in there and he tries going backwards and it just pulls right around. Yeah. Well, he just 
pretty much cod once he's in there. I just checked these ones yesterday, so I'm kind of expecting that he wouldn't bother it today. Maybe this evening he'll probably come around. Well, Nick mostly taught me about this stuff, my father-in-law. Um, I've been around it all my life. When I was growing up with my grandparents. Practically raise on beaver meat, they told me. <laughs> I always, well, my grandparents and the one that um, pretty much showed me how to live a healthy lifestyle. You know, but, you know, I had my bouts with alcohol and drugs and stuff, but not no more. I got my family and stuff to worry about, and I'm gonna teach all my kids this stuff. All this stuff, um, pretty much, you know, trying to make a little bit of subsistence lifestyle. And uh, <clears throat> watching my kids grow up, and you know, that's mostly part of it is watching my kids grow up and being there for them when they need me. Plus, uh, I have a wonderful wife that you know, she's always there helping me too. So, I don't even um, think about touching alcohol and drugs anymore. Just you know, never even crossed my mind. I got tired of living in the city. Um, it's just uh, it was getting too hectic living in the city, raising my kids and you know I didn't have to worry about them out here, you know. So uh, out here they they always got somebody watching them. You always know where they're at. You know. Plus, if they're um, they don't have to stay in all the time. They can go out anytime they want. You know. Yeah, I lived in the city for about four years, and uh, I just got tired of it. My wife is originally from here, and so we came out here and lived. I started living out here. I loved it out here when I first came out here. Um, Maybe about three years ago, I came out here with my father-in-law. He invited me out here to go moose hunting. So, um, ever since then, I just wanted to come back out here. As he travels these rivers, he's following in the footsteps of his ancestors, except he's not leaving footprints. He's leaving snow machine tracks. He traveled around 20 miles this afternoon. Without the machine, that would take all day. Watching miles of snow blanketed wilderness slip by, it's easy to realize why traditional camps rarely had more than a handful of people. It takes a lot of land to gather subsistence. And before the snow machine and motor skiff, traveling was slow and exhausting. As rumors of gold spread through the interior, people from outside fanned out trying to find it. They carried with them dreams and hopes for a better future. But they also brought many of society's ills, including alcohol. Long after the gold was panned out and the prospectors moved on, alcohol remained. But now, an old word with a new significance is making its way upriver. The word is wellness. Like many villages around the state, the people here are getting their village back, no matter what it takes. See, we got one more over here. Okay, is that it? No, no, no. Hoot 
Eaton on Each, the spring carnival, began about 30 years ago when two school teachers with cabin fever decided to have a weekend of fun. didn't always look like this. We had a lot of problem with uh, uh, alcohol. Um, when, pe uh, when people are drinking, uh, the, uh, people uh, get, get hurt or some people are... Uh, we, lo we lost a bunch of people um, due to alcohol. I think people were tired of people not showing up and a lot of people were, were home hangover or something. but. Today I, I, I heard some remark. It was good to see people out there not having a hangover or anything, just enjoying themselves. That? Yeah, that's it. That's it for today. We have to go home and cook. It's now Friday afternoon, and the women of the village are hurrying home to prepare a potluck dinner for everyone at the town hall. First you cook up your fish and you... Uh, Dry, dry it up. I mean, you pick all the moisture out of the water and squeeze all the water out of it. And then you, uh, you have to bone it too, 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 so there's no bone in there. And then you mix up your fish grease, fish and your Crisco in a bowl until it's nice and fluffy. And then you put your sugar and your, your sugar in there. And then you, until it dissolves, and then you put your uh, berries, whatever kind of berries you, you want in there. That's the way I make it. I mean, a lot of people make it a different way. Lots of people make it the other way, but <laughs> I never had to do it this way. Uh, yeah. Along with the berries, Anne Alexia stirs wellness into the aguda she's making. Physical wellness, spiritual wellness, and it means that you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to have. You don't have to be like a person who drinks to have fun. A wellness is something that you. To me, being well is being able to think correctly and just being yourself, not not under influence of yeah, drugs or alcohol. People come from all around to be with friends and family and reinforce the message hidden in the back of their minds. The spirit is strong here and prayers are offered before food is received. Some of the recipes have been handed down for generations. The women have done well, and everyone is eager. Don't <laughs> 
Uh, this is a uh, uh, traditional stuff you do at you just started back a couple of years ago recently. Uh, just the way, the way the old people used to do it. Dennis Trepon struggled to eliminate drinking and drugs from non Dalton, another Athabascan village where he and his family live. Dennis and the non Dalton band don't just want to talk about sobriety, they want to show how much fun it can be. You know, we, we come from a, or where we live is we're only an hour from Anchorage, uh, and it's, it's, it only costs $120 to go to town. We're really close to, uh, we come from a, our, our town is a, is a wet town. You can bring alcohol and whatever into the town. And it's, um, if you want to stay away from alcohol, it's pretty hard. Um, it's, it's not easy. Um, for me personally, I had to, I ended up, you know, taking a pledge. Dennis Trepon struggled to eliminate drinking and drugs from non Dalton, another Athabascan village, where he and his family live. Dennis and the non Dalton band don't just want to talk about sobriety, they want to show how much fun it can be. Good night. Thank you very much and good night. Before everybody goes, I'd like to thank the people of Nikolai. The dancing and smiles continue into the wee hours of the night. And after a very short sleep, folks here awake to this. Go, 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 go. Go, go. I'm going to some nail. See if I can win in the game. See, I'm five nails. No, 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 three, Della. Three huh? nails. Three? three nails. Oh, just three? Oh, wow. <laughs> I got the biggest hammer so I can win. Ready? Get set. Go! Nope, they're not building a new cabin. These tough Athabascan women are pounding and sawing in good fun. The games of Hootenanit show the skills people use to survive in this wild land, but they show something else as well. Set, go. We can watch through our camera as new friendships are being made and old friendships are being made stronger. As the people open up, the wellness process becomes easier and the whole village becomes stronger. A little snow helps the blade slide faster. Man, that's hard. <laughs> 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 
And just when the competition couldn't get any hotter, it's time for the fire building contest. Get set, go! Each contestant starts with a can of water, a log, a piece of cardboard, and an axe. The person who makes their water boil first wins. Watch those fingers now, guys. At the dance tonight, people are a little more worn out, tired from two exhausting days of fun, but they're still out there, spinning and grinning. As the dance rolls along, there's time to reflect on this village's move towards wellness. There's still a long way to go, but the seeds of wellness are being planted in the minds of the children here. These children have eyes always open, and they learn through example. Soon they'll be the ones running the village and they will decide the course for the future. Thank you everyone for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska and thank you Nikolai Alaska, the good residents there. We really appreciated your hospitality. Thank you, Perry Asogiak and Tananak Chiefs for making this program possible. I'm Janie Green. Till next time, God bless you. We'll see you again next week.